Are you sure? Are you really sure? You can say you are. Because to be sure is a sign of strength. To be sure is a sign of maturity. And we don't trust people who say, I doubt. We don't like to say, I am not sure. We don't like to hear, I really don't know. Certainty for most people is a sign of strength. Certainty for most people paves the way to success. But you see, my dear brothers, certainty is not always a blessing because too much of it can make you blind. Doubt is not always a weakness. Doubt can be constructive. Doubt is not always destructive because doubt can also be very dynamic and very life-giving. So when I ask you, are you sure? I am not making fun of your dedication, your maturity, your intelligence. I just want to tell you that there is space for doubt and it is all right to doubt because in doubting, our prejudices and our biases can be cured. When you doubt, you also become aware that you are not by yourself, you are with the Lord. When you doubt, like Peter, who sank in the water because he had little faith, it will be also an opportunity for the Lord to lift you up from drowning and save you. So in asking you, are you sure? And are you really sure? I am inviting you to have a little element of doubt and not to be ashamed that there is doubt. Not to be ashamed that there is I don't know. Not to be ashamed of that because that little spark of doubt in you will open many possibilities for you also. I say it again, there is dynamic doubting and it is life-giving because if you're always so sure and so certain, you might be bordering on self-satisfaction, nearing arrogance, nearing self-conceit, nearing self-worship, adoration, Narcissism. So you can never really be sure because the brothers ahead of you who were so sure of themselves have stumbled and fallen and then made the devil laugh because when we called by God say with conviction, I am very sure, the devil smiles. Because half of your body has been taken over by the evil one. It's all right to doubt. But transform your doubt into asking for help. Transform your doubt into saying to the Lord, Lord, help me in my unbelief. Help me in my lack of faith. Help me in my doubts. There are so many things I don't know, Lord. There are so many things I will never be certain about. Just, dear Lord, hold me by the hand and that will be enough for us. The second question running in my mind that I want to ask you is, are you really fit for the priesthood? Are you? Are you fit? Are you suitable? 
That is why at the rite of ordination, when the priest presents the ordinance, do you know them to be worthy? And he says, we have consulted God's people. But the bishop says, relying on the help of the Lord God, we choose this man. So back to the question, are you fit? We saw strengths in you. Intelligence, arts, self-discipline, empathy in listening. We, see so many, we saw so many strengths in you. External piety, your devotion, your zeal for the poor. We saw so many signs of good priesthood in you. You are good with the people. You have homilies that touch. You have a presence that inspires. But what about your unsuitability? What about your weaknesses? My dear brothers, your strengths can bring you to success. But the awareness, the admission of your weaknesses can lead you to holiness. You are not called to be successful by your strength. You are called to be holy by recognizing your weaknesses, by recognizing your unsuitability, by recognizing that you are really inside and out unfit, misfit, malfit. And yet, in recognizing that, you can say to the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Are you fit? Are you really fit? And the answer is, by the mercy of God. We would not be able to say, I am sure. We cannot be, we cannot be presumptuous to say, I am very sure. I don't even hold my tomorrow because my future is in the hands of God. I don't know. I am in doubt. But the Lord will help me in my doubt. I am unfit and I have weaknesses. But the Lord will give me strength so that my sorrows for my sin will be turned into hope and to joy. And today, you're going to be priests. In the seminary, we told you to be giving priests, to be generous priests, to shun entitlement, to shun privileges, and take your cross daily and follow the Lord. So the third question I ask is, in as much as you are not sure, and in, in as much as you know you are not fit, what can you give the church? What can you give the church? Keep in mind, my dear brothers, that we are not asking money from you. People will give you money. People will give you gifts. Give it back to the people. But even if that money, that gift, has been given back to the people, that would not be enough. Jesus in his lifetime here on earth did not build one hospital. He did not build any school. Not one orphanage. Not one home for the aged. Not even a small synagogue or a barangay chapel. The Lord Jesus did not give us any of these. He did not build, he did not construct. Not even one brick over another brick. But what did the Lord do that he has given this great impact in the whole world? What did the Lord give that made him so important in, in the whole history of humanity? And it is this, my dear brothers. God in Jesus gave us God. Jesus gave us the Father's love. 
And that is all you can give. The money you give is not yours. The reflections you give are not yours. The time you give is not yours. The gifts, the food that you give, they are not yours. What is yours? Yours is the Lord. You belong to Him. And it is your relationship with Him. It is your belonging to Him. That is your only treasure. You belong to Jesus. You have heard me say this story about Santa Teresa that he saw a little boy playing in the monastery and Teresa was curious and she asked, My name is Teresa of Jesus. What is your name? And the little boy said, My name is Jesus of Teresa. You are Roel of Jesus. You are Jose, you are Aris, you are Lawrence of Jesus. You belong to him. And show us that you belong to him. By giving us only Jesus and nothing more, no one else. We only need you if Jesus is in you. We don't like you. We don't need you. We need God. And then back to the question, what are you willing to give? Say only, only God. Because all that you have is God's. The only thing that is yours is your sin. Are you sure? Are you fit? What are you willing to give us? My dear brothers, we will grow old together serving the Lord. And how sweet and how amazing it is to serve the Lord. You can get distracted and doubts can weigh you down. But when in doubt, ask the Lord to increase your faith. When you feel so dirty and you know that you are misfit, unfit, malfit for the priesthood, say, Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. And when you have nothing more to give, nothing more in the pocket, and the mind has run dry, and the zest is not sealed anymore, is not there anymore, then give us only Jesus, the Jesus who calls you, because today, Jesus says, My name is Jesus of Roel. I am Jesus of Jose. I am Jesus of Aris. I am Jesus of Lawrence. You are entering into a great mystery. That if you would understand how great this mystery is, you would die. Just say, Amen.